Welcome to the Stories in EDU podcast, the show where we talk with real educators and hear their powerful impact. Their stories will grab you, inspire you, and show you the reach of the work we do. And now, the Bretzman Group presents your hosts, Josh Gauthier and Mandy Taylor. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Stories in EDU. Mandy, how's it going today? You know, it's it's great, Josh. We are all of us here in Texas because there are seven snow flurries. Have you been open the window because it may snow for five minutes, and if that happens, I'm going to watch it. Just That's, so you know, I'm great. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, uh, at least now when we're recording this episode, it is yes. early yes. December. Uh, we just had our first dusting of snow here, so I find it hilarious that you're getting snow at the same time we are up here in Green Bay. Well, it was 82 on Monday here so this is kind of a big deal <laughs> hang in there mandy hang I in mean. there this too shall pass Ooh. all right so i'm super excited to bring on our guest tonight and her name is kate baker kate welcome to stories need you hi guys thanks for having me so why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are what you teach all right i'm a ninth grade ela teacher from new jersey this is my 19th year teaching um, I'm living on the coast, so, you know, when you, you hear about, like, the Jersey Shore TV show, that's not me. <laughs> that's not us. Um, but, uh, yeah, love what I'm doing uh, with infusing technology into the classroom and trying to meet my, my students in unique ways beyond the uh, traditional grammarian English teacher uh, persona. So, yeah, I'm excited to share some stories with you guys. I don't hear you guys anymore. Oh, ha ha. I had <laughs> muted my microphone while you were talking because my cat was meowing in the background. I was like, what is happening? And I'm like, wait, what did he say? <laughs> so um, anyways, so you said something in there. I don't think it's a statement I've ever heard in my entire life. So it's like my ears were like bouncing around on it. Uh, Non-grammarian sounds like somebody from like early times in the Middle East. Um, <laughs> So, so uh, non-grammarian, what do, you, what do you mean by that? Well, just the old, you know, proverbial English teacher, um, you know, buttoned up and brings home the bags of papers to red pen to death. Um, yeah, I don't do any of that. So I try to, to break that mold and, and really try to put the power of learning in my students' hands that, you know, I'm not the one that's just, you know, slashing their papers to death all the time. And in fact, have, you know, trying to reach them in other ways beyond just paper writing. Oh, fascinating. Uh, yeah, that's um, actually something that I'm struggling with a little bit right now. I'm a tech coach, but this year I've been um, asking teachers if they would like me to be in their classroom for a quarter, and I will be in with one of their classes every day for a quarter um, as a way to help coach and, and be there to observe every day and, and be able to have conversations about how things are going. Um, and uh, we just did an on-demand writing prompt and our, my co-teacher is still grading them, and this happened over a week ago. Um, and they're pretty short. I mean, there are a few paragraphs, but it just takes so long. So, uh, yes, yeah, I think I'd be really curious to hear, you know, what, what you figured out there to h- how you're doing things differently. Maybe not that it saves you time, but that you've, you've noticed your students get a lot more out of it. So I uh, flip my classroom and I, I tr- we use Chromebooks where we have a cart that we share. So for the most part, I'm one to one most days a week with my students, uh, which is nice. You know, as much as I try to share the cart with other teachers, um, most often it just lives in my classroom. <laughs> but it allows me to do some things uh, paperlessly. So uh, I'm an Edmodo certified trainer and um, Edmodo is the online classroom hub and for our odyssey unit i gamified it so have you guys heard of gamification uh-huh. yeah so in this state in wisconsin we're very lucky enough to have michael matera uh who's he's just down the highway from me about an hour and a half uh so um i know he's well known in that universe so we've had lots of conversations about gamification but i want to hear about right. this because ela seems like a totally different ball game when it comes to to how to gamify so so now I'll, I'll be honest, you know, being an English person, I'm not, I'm not good with numbers. So I, I didn't go crazy in full tilt with like experience points and, and the whole like crazy structure. 
I just did it real simplified. I created an Edmodo group, which I named the Odyssey, and then um, broke all of our subtopics for the Odyssey into small groups. And then in each small group, I loaded some resources, a quick activity for them to show what they know, and then like a quick self-grading quiz so that I could get the points. And then if they achieved those tasks, they scored proficiency, proficiently sorry, on the quiz and demonstrated that they understood the material, then I leveled them up and unlocked the next group for them and gave them access to the next small group. So I did this all as our our precursor to the Odyssey with um, you know Greek mythology. It's a big, big, of course, epic topic, and um, you know all the crazy names of the Greek gods and goddesses. And yeah, there's a lot of action and fighting, but but it's a it's a cumbersome text, and especially when we're looking at translations, it's hard for my lower level students to get into the Fagels, the Lattimore, the Fitzgerald. So I wanted to give them a unique entry point into it. So created this Odyssey game, said, okay, here's what we're doing. We're, you know, you get a week and um, some levels may take you five minutes to get through. Some le levels may take you 10, 15, maybe a half hour to get through or two class periods. I said, you don't know to get into the game. And uh, my students were, I was really impressed. Uh, and the honors kids were a little like, oh, we're playing a game. Can't you just like have us do school? And not <laughs> yeah. your hoops. Yeah. But, and they were fine. They went along with my crazy idea. But where I found the most success was my lower level disaffected boys. The ones who like are tired of being told what to do all the time. The ones who are, you know, constantly doing whatever else they're, you know, not supposed to be doing at the moment. So when I like step back and said, here, we're going to play this game. They were like, Ooh, what's this? And, uh, my one student, Ray, he was, a uh, you know, a CD student, he did enough to get by. He sat in the back corner of the room, had like the long hair, like over his face, you know, and it was, you know, he was just such an unassuming kid, just a, yeah, hey, Mrs. Baker, like just real quiet persona, didn't want to get noticed at all. So you do the game and Ray is a rocket. He is flying through the levels. He is scoring top of the, the leaderboard and the stuff he's producing is phenomenal. And he gets an A for the third marking period when we're doing the Odyssey. Totally gets an A. I'm like, wow, Ray, look at this. You got an A. This is phenomenal. And he's like, yeah, thanks, Mrs. Baker. He's like, that, that's the first A I've ever got. That's the first A I got. And I'm like, right, yeah, it's the first A for English, right? For, you know, freshman year. You know, yeah, you know, first marking period, second marking period, C's. I said, but look, you got an A. And he's like, no, 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 Mrs. Baker. He's like, that was my first A ever right wow ever 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 in school and i and i stopped for a second i was like wait ever like you've never gotten an a before and he said no uh, no mr baker never got an a and then fourth marking period we did shakespeare romeo and juliet okay like aside from the sword fighting like the worst thing ever with boys and iambic pentameter <laughs> ray again was a rocket and i didn't gamify it but Ray got another A for fourth marking period. And to this day, when I still see Ray in the hallway, I'm like, Ray, you got an A. And I'm like, how's your grades going? And, and he's like, well, that's a children's book. <laughs> you write that down. Yeah. He's like, you know, they're, they're good, Mrs. Baker. They're good. You know, and it was really nice to see that, like, you know, he was such an unassuming, quiet, under the radar kid. And it really gave him some confidence and let him feel successful. And then, you know, carried that into other difficult material or most difficult stuff for the years where he got his A's. Yeah. That's well, awesome. you know, one of the things that you're talking about, I mean, I, what I, sometimes I just take little notes as people are talking and start writing things down. And so a couple of things that stood out to me, one of them is that you teach ninth grade ELA and you said something about disaffected boys, um, things like that. So I have an eighth grade son. And so my, I don't feel like he's, tends to be disaffected, but I do notice that his, his um, engagement with the content is highly affected by the activities that they do and his relationship with the teacher. It's actually the very first thing we talked about on the podcast and how um, 
he will say, I love science or I hate this subject or whatever based on what I can tell are his current classroom realities, you know. And mm -hmm. as an educator, I know different, th I know that, but as a mom, it has been so fascinating to kind of experience school through the eyes of my kids. And as the mom of a kid who, um, you know, you, we know their potential because they're our one person, but then we send them to a place where they're one of 175 and, you know, and so sometimes it can be, it's like, oh, you know, and, and I think that there were, there were so many things about what you said that I can see my son latching onto or, you know, being, um, just being motivated by, you know, um, because like what you were saying is like some kids enjoyed it, some kids didn't. That's true with any classroom experience that we design, you know, that there are some kids that want it this way. There are some kids that gamification works for. They're, you know, with professional development, some teachers like badging, some teachers think it's, eh, I don't, I'm not really motivated by that. And so I think in order to be the best we can be, it's that idea, like you said, it's simplified, it's small groups, you provided resources, um, provided formative assessments, but ultimately it was mastery learning. And then once they demonstrated mastery, there was a new task, which if we could just do that as grown-ups with content, with things that we have to do, with PD with, you know, all of those things just seem so critical to feeling successful, you know, like you were saying, this, this one particular kid, but, but also just a broader educational experience and how, in, how key that experience was for that one child. So, so. Yeah, and so we always look at like the big, big test, you know, the big, you know, the big numbers. And I think so often we forget it's, it's really the little things that matter. Mm -hmm. And it's the little things that eventually build up. Like you talk about, like, you know, you mentioned the snowflakes, you know, the flurries. <laughs> right. Well, you know, one snowflake itself doesn't do much, but when you put all of those snowflakes together, holy moly, you can have a blizzard. So it's all about like conditioning our students that, you know, giving them those small feelings of success more frequently will help to build and drive. I mean, it, it is all conditioning. It's all, you know, kind of dog training too. I look at my, <laughs> my, uh, my freshmen, I often think of them like puppies. Like there's no quote unquote bad kid. There is no, there's no bad kid. You know, we have the behavior issues. We have the, you know, the ones who try to act out, but it's all about attention seeking behavior. I mean, if you want to boil it down and it's just a way of like, you know, they've been conditioned to either love school or hate school. Mm -hmm. And our job as teachers is to find ways to retrain them and to get them to feel successful and break them out of their shells or their patterns. I love that. That and that quote about the, the blizzard thing, I, that was super cool. Like that needs to be on the wall. One of those like flowery <laughs> text things that you paste onto the wall. Like I can't even was, take credit for that. I know I found it someplace else. Like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, gosh, I'll have to go back and check my sources, but yeah. <laughs> well, uh, you know, we were going to talk about one more thing, but I think we've already almost made it to 15 minutes. So I think we're going to go into our lightning <laughs> round and we're going to make a point to bring you back on. Yeah. Uh, so we can hear about some of those other stories because, I mean, that's just one out of, I'm sure, a bunch uh, and something about, about therapy dogs, too, that, that sounded pretty exceptional. So we'll definitely have to have you back again to tell our audience all about that. That'd be great. I'd be happy to chat anytime. Love telling stories. <laughs> Super cool. Yeah. I mean, that's, there's nothing better, I think, for our profession than to do this, than to take time to share these stories, the funny ones, the sad ones, the inspirational ones, the ones that make us angry. Like, I think that's what helps us feel connected as teachers and realize we're all kind of in this together, but we also can learn so much from our stories. And just the little bit that you spoke about what you did has my brain turning about ways mm -hmm. that I can work with, uh, with my current co-teacher uh, in an ELA environment. So I'm really excited about that and, and so glad you had a few minutes for us. So we have one piece of business left to take care of as the regular listeners of the podcast know. Uh, we always take some time to do a round of uh, personalized PD game of stories uh, created by the Bretzman Group. Uh, it's a deck of 52 different cards. It's like a standard playing card deck. In fact, they even have the little playing card 
things on them, you could use this as a deck of cards, but it also has different prompts for discussions amongst educators. Uh, so we just pulled a card at random here, and we're gonna each take one minute. Okay, I, I still keep threatening I'm gonna pull out a timer, I haven't yet, but you know, just be on your honor. Uh, so one minute to tell a story about this topic. Uh, our guest, Kate, you're gonna go first, because you know, we're so okay. nice to our guests here. <laughs> Uh, and we'd take a minute and just share about this card. So here's the prompt. Create student videos. Tell a story about how students created videos for your class. Did they act out a scene from your content, use an avatar, or edit it like a Hollywood producer? What tools did students use to make it awesome? So I, this idea I stole from Aaron Sams. He does um, this Iron Chef like screencasting activity for PD where you know he gives people um, you know, random items and they have to then create a video, uh, create a screencast that features those random items, like the, the TV show Iron Chef. So I took that and I turned it into Iron Chef Flash Theater. And so as a fun activity for Romeo and Juliet, before the students actually read the story, I gave them a list of Shakespearean words. Uh, we used the Shakespearean insults, uh, the, that wonderful list of insults. And, uh, you know, you, you onion eyed giglet, you know, those random like weird things. And then I said, um, and a rose was the bonus tool. And I said, it's the flash. So you have to be fast. So they could use their smartphones or they could use their Chromebooks. Um, and I had a slide deck I made of like digital paper dolls, like clip art that they could position characters to, um, with a background, so if they didn't want to have their faces on the screen, they could just do voiceover. Or if they were more like extroverted and want to be in front of the camera, they just use their smartphones. So they had to record a one minute video that featured, you know, it had to be a scene, some sort of scenario that I gave them, and the Shakespearean words and work arose in. And it was a lot of fun, and it was a great icebreaker activity. Uh, especially when we went back to rewatch their videos as our lead into Romeo and Juliet. And then Shakespeare just wasn't as scary anymore. Oh, that is super cool. And I'm going to steal that one from you too. I know, that's awesome. <laughs> All right, Mandy, you're up. <laughs> well, I'm kind of cheating a little bit because I'm actually at school. I usually am podcasting from home. So I was able to slide over and get my new favorite book called Focus on Teaching by Jim Knight. Um, as an instructional coach, I work uh, largely with teachers, and so uh, one of the things I'm really trying to work on more this year is video coaching, and it's basically just the idea of video teaching. Um, the teacher gets the video, so what I've been doing lately is just airdrop it from my iPad to theirs, and then I destroy or delete, destroy, delete the one that's on my, com my iPad. And so the teacher has full control over their video. And then in um, Jim Knight's book, he has some, paper, some forms where it's basically like, how close to ideal um, did you feel like your students were here, here, here? What about you? Here, 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 you know? And so it's a neat way for me to facilitate something, but I don't. I'm not in, it's, it's not, I'm not in control of it. And so then, um, just for example, a teacher came the other day, she goes, okay, I watched my video and I already have ideas for what I need to do. And I'm like, okay, what can I support you to do next? And she's like, I want to work on this and this and this. And I was like, okay, we'll work on that right when we get back from the break, we'll set up the thing. But the teacher was in control. The teacher made the decision. The teacher feels empowered now. And it wasn't any, it wasn't punitive, it wasn't, um, it, it's, I'm so excited about the possibilities with video coaching. So I kind of took it from a different slant, but that's where, that's, that was my edgy win for yesterday and today. That's so awesome. And I've read uh, s uh, well, at least one book by Jim Knight and then several selected readings of other things. Uh, Better Conversations is the book I read. But yeah, there's so much stuff and he's really big on the video he's thing. Fantastic. All right. I guess I'm up. So I have to answer. Uh, I am going to draw way back from four years ago. Uh, I had, so I taught business ed. That was my certification area. I guess it's still technically is my licenses. Um, and usually with that, I'd have classes for a quarter. So my main teaching experience was in middle school and my classes were a quarter long, except for like one was a semester. 
Uh, then I had the opportunity to work in the elementary school teaching keyboarding, which was uh, 300 kids, and I got to see each class one day a week for half an hour. So that was crazy. But while I was there, they gave me uh, what they called win time. So there was a fourth grade win time, which is like their intervention enrichment period. Uh, so I had this group of fourth graders that were like the high-end fourth graders that needed enrichment every single day for a half an hour. So as somebody who had a classroom that I didn't have kids for a full year, that was awesome. Uh, so one thing we did is we read aloud uh, the book Drizzle, uh, which is a really cool book if you've never read it. Uh, and then what I had them do is we, so these are fourth graders, we loaded up Wii Video, I got them in there, and I said, we're going to make book trailers. And then I also talked to the principal, got permission slips sent home and said, if you finish, we're going to put them on YouTube. Uh, and it was so much fun. And they were, they were really imaginative with how they were showing the different things. Uh, and um, in fact, I think one memory of mine is they went downstairs to the gym to pull up a wrestling mat so that they could perform falls uh, in, their, in their little book trailers. Uh, so it was such, such a fun time. And just with those fourth graders, it was, uh, it was awesome. And I miss, miss that class so much. I think they're eighth grade now. I, my math is bad, but that's four years ago. So that'd be eighth grade now. <laughs> yeah. And it was, that was just such a fun group and, you know, eclectic and willing to do some creative stuff like that. So that would be one of my favorite examples of, of when students made videos for me. So I think that brings us to the end. Uh, Kate, once again, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Josh and Mandy. I greatly enjoyed it. All right. And if somebody wanted to be in contact with you, wanted to reach out, what would be the best way for them to do that? Well, you can always find me on Twitter at KTBKR4. And then I am, uh, I also blog. So Baker's BYOD uh, Lit. So I talk about, you know, how I use technology in my classroom. I probably should blog more often than I have been recently but I will say my old posts are some really oldie and goodies mm -hmm. so there's a lot of good stuff in there um because I like to blog about like the how-to so oh, you can always cool. replicate it excellent well Mandy it's been fun always a pleasure Josh all right and until the next episode of stories in edu thanks for listening Thank you for tuning in to the Stories and EDU podcast. Please be sure to subscribe and leave us a review. Until next time, thanks again.